Hey, I'm David Buck, and in this video, we're going to look at the top nine mistakes photographers make in Lightroom. Number nine, overuse of the AI selection tool. Arguably one of the best individual features in Lightroom is also one of the best ways to wreck an image. Anytime the subject of an image looks like they're not part of the background, your brain is screaming, hey, there's something wrong here. When it looks overprocessed or the light doesn't match, it looks fake. Here's why. When you select the subject, Lightroom creates a mask, which is this little thingy right here, this red thing. So you can make adjustments to it and it reveals where the very sharp edges that Lightroom creates are. So any over adjustment here makes the subject look cut out from the background, which is super useful, but it's also tempting to take it too far and to make it look like it's been faked. And since the release of this feature, I see it all the time, people overusing this tool to create separation between the subject and the background. Be very careful when making adjustments here. Number eight, over contrasted. Too much contrast destroys an image faster than anything else. Because the slider is right here and at the top, people typically do the top-down editing method. White balance, exposure, then contrast. But as soon as you dial up the contrast, you push the image to the end and far past it. Any other adjustment you make from here is going to be a balancing act between contrast and whatever other thing you're trying to do. You'll be constantly coming back here to adjust the contrast. Too much contrast is not a good thing. I recommend making all of your adjustments outside of contrast first and use this one last. Don't push it too far, losing your blacks and your highlights and making your image look overprocessed. Number seven, this one I call the slap a preset on it syndrome. Look, presets are great, but when you use the same one on everything, the same way, every time, it just looks bad. Look, pictures are different. Landscapes have different colors, people wear different colored clothes, but when you have the same tone over applied to every image, it certainly gives all of your photos a particular look, but not always a good one. Learn what your favorite preset is doing, and learn how to adjust it to different types of images to get the most out of it. Stop slapping the same preset on every image. Number six not straightening up buildings. This one is so easy to do that it ticks me off every time that I see it when it's posted online. Not pressing this button here on a picture with a building in it is a major error. Buildings are meant to be vertical. That's why engineers spend so much time making sure they're standing up straight when they're being built. If you're taking a picture of it and you tilt the camera and make the buildings crooked, press this little button here and magically they stand up straight again. A straight building is a happy building. Not pressing this button is a big mistake. Maybe that building in Pisa should use this button. Number five, too many details. Look, recovering highlights and shadows is fantastic. However, you can have too much of a good thing. Recover all the shadows and the highlights and dial up the localized contrast and you get what used to be called an HDR or high dynamic range image. Essentially, you bring the detail of everything out, which means that there's no attempt to draw the viewer's attention to the subject. This look has been incredibly overdone and looks processed and terrible in 97% of the cases. Instead, learn to lead the viewer's eye to the subject and enhance the story of the image. Don't pull out the detail of everything. Number four, skies that don't match. So you've taken this beautiful photo, and when you're trying to make it look even better, you take too many liberties of where the light is coming from. When light is coming from the sky and it doesn't match the shadows of an image, you can immediately tell it's been faked. Another way to screw this one up is to change the sky to something that doesn't match what the ground looks like. Be careful that your skies are lighting your scene properly. Any incongruency here and your brain's like, hey, man, that ain't right. Number three, I call this one taking an adjustment too far. And it can be done in so many different ways. Too much saturation or blacks or contrast or exposure or using our color grading to give it too much of a look. Too much vignette. Too much structure. Too much tone curve. There are so many ways to do too much. Editing a photo well is a delicate balancing act where we're trying to push an image to the edge of what it can be, but stay within the realm of believability. It has to appear natural even though we're making it supernatural. It's so easy to push one of these things too far. So I always try to take it a little bit too far and then bring it back to what appears natural. Number two, halos. Local adjustments are great. I love local adjustments. Sometimes I feel like, Oprah, you get a local adjustment, and you get a local adjustment, and you get a local adjustment. What isn't great is when you can see the actual adjustment being made. So you see here when I apply a radial filter, which is one of these round ones, if I try to brighten up my subject, you get this haloing effect where you can see the brighter circle being created. You can see the gradient from the center out to the side, and it looks faked. You can also see it here with the vignette, to a lesser 
degree with the linear gradient, anytime you can see what effect is being used by looking at the picture, there's still more work to be done. Don't rely too heavily on one particular tool. Leave no halo behind. And the worst mistake that I think you can make in Lightroom is spending too much time in it. You didn't fall in love with photography so you could sit in front of a computer. You have your camera, so you should be out taking pictures. By not using the synchronization features and management tools within Lightroom to be able to get in, get out, and get finished, you're spending too much time here. Editing one image fully, and then moving on to the next, editing one image, then the next image, then the next image, is going to leave you in Lightroom all the time. And it's going to leave you with either a bunch of unscattered, unfinished images, or you're going to be spending all of your time sitting at your computer. Full disclosure, I have a paid online course about photo editing workflow and learning to use the speed features in Lightroom, which I'll link below. But basically, there are two tools that are essential for you to use on a regular basis, and that is synchronize and match total exposure. Using these tools together looks like this and allows you to match the adjustments you've taken on one photo and apply it to the same lighting scenario and the same scene of all of the other images that you have from there. Even if you've made adjustments to your camera setting, it will still match it to be exact. Synchronize will copy the adjustments you've made and match total exposure will calculate the settings you had in camera and match them to the same brightness. If you set yourself up correctly here, it's possible to completely edit a family session in 20 minutes and a wedding in an hour and a half. Incredibly powerful tools that have already built, been built within Lightroom and not using them is probably the biggest mistake anybody makes in Lightroom. You can click the link below to check out a free 15 minute video that I have explaining how this is done. So try to steer clear of these mistakes, create beautiful photos, and the next thing we're gonna look at is how to make images pop in Lightroom.